Hey everybody, I'm here to answer the question today, like, can you actually do live streaming on Starlink? And I'm not just talking about, like, casual Zoom calls, that kind of thing. I'm talking about, like, actual professional video quality productions where your client, paying clients would actually be proud to actually have you work for them using that service. So I've actually had my Starlink dish now for almost two months, just shy of two months. And I've got the newer version, the square dish, the dishy McFlat face and square, squishy, whatever. And I spent many hours actually testing this with multiple different streaming uh, devices and software and talked about talk to you about the results that I've actually come up with. And then at the van end, I'll talk about whether I'm going to be keeping it or whether I'm going to be uh, getting rid of it or whatever. So uh, I tested this with an, a few different configurations. So I tested it with the Blackmagic Design Web Presenter 4K with the ATEM Mini Extreme with the Teradek Video Go, and then with OBS on, on a Windows PC. And the results across all of those was drastically different. So uh, your level of tolerance for dealing with issues is going to determine whether Starlink is actually going to work for you or not. So let's actually start by talking about the Blackmagic devices. So the WebPresenter 4K and HD and also the ATEM Mini Extreme that I used for testing purposes. These devices were, I think, probably the ones that offered the lowest quality experience of any of those that I tested, with one exception, which I'll get to in a minute. So these devices, the main flaw is they don't automatically adapt to various uh, bitrate changing conditions. Now, the thing with Starlink is that your speeds are just always going to vary just by the very nature of how it works. The satellites that you're talking to are moving through the sky at any given point in time. And so the distance that your, your signal is having to travel and the angle uh, relative to how your dish is pointed is always going to be changing. So the amount of bandwidth that you get with Starlink is always varying. It's never, never constant. And when you're doing live streaming, one of the things you actually really want to have is consistent bandwidth. And some devices cope with it better than others. And in my testing, I found that the Blackmagic devices do not cope with that very well at all. So while I could see from time to time enough bandwidth to be able to do a stream at 10 or 12 megabits per second, that was very much the exception and not the rule. Typical speeds were somewhere more in the four to six megabits per second. However, it would dip down lower, and that's where the Blackmagic devices actually really started to fall apart. Now, if we take a look here at the monitor screen for the WebPresenter HD, we can see a lot of what's going on. So, currently, I have this set to stream at 6 megabits per second, which is good for, for 1080. However, I've, I found that with Starlink, I was not able to consistently stream at that rate, uh, and I had better results the more I lowered the bit rate overall. Uh, four megabits, it was kind of passable. Three megabits, it got, definitely got better. But at that point, your video quality is starting to break up, especially if you've got something going on with a lot of action or you're cutting between cameras quite often uh, or high, just high uh, frame rate in general. It doesn't seem to cope with that super, super well. Now, what we can see here, this is, this is actually streaming over Starlink as I'm speaking. Uh, I'm streaming at six megabits, and the issue that you have here is that the cache there in the lower right constantly keeps increasing in its size. You know, it's filling up, which it's nice that you have that feature, but at the same time, once your cache gets to 99%, you're definitely dropping video. The other problem with this is anytime that number is increasing, your viewers are likely experiencing stuttering or pauses in the stream that they're watching. Basically what's happening is your device is not able to get data out to the internet fast enough in order to provide a nice high quality stream for your viewers. And if you lower the bitrate enough, it can be somewhat consistent, but I found that by the time you get to a bitrate that's low enough that Starlink is not causing an issue, that the video quality has really degraded quite a lot and it's not something that you probably want to present to a paying customer as a service that you're offering. So. Bottom line, with the Blackmagic devices, uh, it's not necessarily a great experience. Um, they do not handle, they do not adapt to changing bandwidth conditions that are present with satellite internet. Therefore, I'm not sure that I would personally recommend 
using a black magic de design streaming device of any type, any type of web presenter or A10 mini, so they basically behave exactly the same way. I would not recommend using those on Starlink service. The one thing that I will say though is that you're able to actually change the bandwidth in the middle of a stream. So you don't have to stop and start your stream in order to change the bitrate that you're streaming at. So if you do happen to be watching it and you can see that your buffer is filling up like it is now, you can go into your settings. I'm gonna drop here to streaming low and save that. And we'll immediately see that the bitrate is dropping and we should see here in a moment that the, the cache is starting to empty a little bit. Although right now, it seems that it's not cooperating as I'm trying to demo this. So yeah, we're about to hit that 99% threshold, which means that video is being lost and dropped. All right, the next one I wanna talk about is the Teradek Video Go. So this is my primary streaming device. This is the one I use most of the time for most of my streams. And then one of the reasons that I selected this is it has a feature that allows you to bond multiple internet connections together so that when you have unfavorable conditions or unreliable conditions on one of your connections, or not just even not enough bandwidth on one of your connections, you can actually pull those together in order to give you a better chance of succeeding. So I had high hopes for the, for the Teradek unit. Uh, I tested it in two different configurations. So I tested it both uh, natively talking from the device to directly to YouTube and going through Teradek's ShareLink service. I did not test core. I assumed that it's going to work basically the same way as ShareLink, although I, I did not actually test that for myself. What I found with this device is that if you do it direct, so the device directly to Facebook, YouTube, whatever, it doesn't work very well. It doesn't handle the changing conditions super, super well. Uh, it will actually stop streaming without any significant warning. Not good, in other words. So if you want a nice, reliable stream and you're, if you have to go over ShareLink or another satellite service, the Teradek VDU series, if you don't use ShareLink, is not going to be a good option. Now, if you do go through their ShareLink or Core service, on the other hand, it's a much better experience. And at that point, it does actually adapt to changing conditions quite well, as a matter of fact. In fact, of the devices that I tested, going through ShareLink on the Teradek Video Go, I think provided the best experience for viewers. And the reason for that is that this device adapts really, really well to the available amount of bandwidth that's given to it. So I tested it six, 10, four, lots of different bit rates. And no matter which one I chose, the device would maximize up to that bitrate that I selected. Now at times when the Starlink bandwidth was dropping down into the one to two megabit range, which does happen, the Teradek Video Go going through the ShareLink service actually handled that very, very well. So the video quality was degraded while the bitrate was, was lower, but it was consistent, it stayed up, it kept working. So there was no interruption to the viewers while I was using the Teradek unit. So at no point when I was doing testing did I see any sort of uh, buffering or pauses or freezes on the live stream that was going out. It adapted really well to the changing bandwidth that was available on the Starlink service. Now, because this also supports bonding, you can actually take advantage of that. So you can you can use ShareLink and cellular or ShareLink and another internet connection. You happen to be working at a venue where they have an internet, hardline internet connection, but it doesn't have a lot of bandwidth. You could use ShareLink on top of what's available to you through that in order to get enough bandwidth in order to do a nice high quality signal. So of the many things that I tested, the Teradek through ShareLink actually provided the best experience of any of them. The Teradek going by itself was the worst because as soon as uh, the bandwidth became a challenge, it just gave up and stopped trying. Now, one other thing that I should mention about the Teradek, uh, it does allow you to change the bit rate during the middle of a stream, but that does cause the stream to actually be interrupted. And so if you start out a stream at a bandwidth that your internet connection cannot reliably sustain through the duration of your stream, you can go in and change the settings, but that means that your stream is going to go offline for some, some number of seconds. Uh, that number varies, but it's some number of seconds and uh, not great. And if you're working with a, a, a streaming service that automatically disconnects and automatically ends a stream when it stops receiving data, that might not be 
a great thing because it could end your stream when you don't intend it to. Anyway, so overall, Teradek with ShareLink, the best experience of anything I tested. Teradek without ShareLink, the worst experience of anything that I tested. So with that, let's move on to OBS. All right, OBS, a piece of software, free software. It's available on Mac, Windows, etc. I tested it on a Windows PC. It was a reasonably low-end PC, but it was certainly up to the task of being able to do live streaming. Now, in terms of how it handled Starlink, it was actually a bit of a mixed bag, honestly. So, start with some of the pros. So, first of all, on OBS, you can dynamically change the bitrate. So, if you find that you're trying to stream it a higher rate than your connection can support, you can go into the settings and change the bitrate even during the middle of a stream with no interruption. You're able to do that freely at any point in time. The other upside that I found with OBS is that the stream doesn't generally stop it, but what it does do when bandwidth gets challenging, OBS start, actually starts dropping frames. So as you're trying to stream your video, if OBS finds that it's not able to get all the, the data out to the internet, you may find that the stream that your viewers are watching is starting to get choppy, and there is some freezes and pauses and... Uh, breakup of the signal and just general stuttering when bandwidth gets low, but the stream doesn't seem to go down. It doesn't, it doesn't stop spontaneously. Other than the occasional breakups of the signal, the quality of the signal stays fairly consistent, more so than the video with ShareLink, but at the same time, given a choice, I probably, I would prefer the video with start with ShareLink over OBS just because the the video stream is more consistent and doesn't experience any of those strange freezing and pausing artifacts that you tend to get with OBS. But it did stay, it did stay up, it didn't quit, it kept trying. And so if keeping the stream alive is of utmost important and you don't want to invest in one of the hardware encoders, OBS can actually do a somewhat acceptable job of streaming over a, a Starlink internet connection via satellite. So. Overall, though, I would say that the OBS experience is kind of somewhere in the middle of the various things that I tested. So depending on your, your situation and the needs of your client, then it is something that may or may not work for you. That's something you have to decide. Now, with all this said, I've got to put out a few caveats. First of all, ShareLink is constantly changing. You know, they're putting up new satellites all the time. On the flip side, they're also bringing new customers on all the time. So they're adding additional bandwidth, but they're also adding customers that's going to be using some of that bandwidth. And so there's no way to predict going forward what that experience is going to be like. So I'm recording this video at the end of March of 2022, and my testing has been done over the last roughly two months. And I don't think that there's a lot of people deployed in my, a lot of people that have Starlink deployed in my area. I think I was probably among I'm one of, some of the first. I signed up for it a very long time ago, and it was just something that very, re very recently became available to me. Uh, but also at the same time I'm recording this, there's been a lot of news of some changes that are happening with Starlink. For example, they just announced some price, price increases. So the price of the dish has gone up, and then the monthly rate has also gone up as well. So it's been $99 a month recent, uh, up until now, and now moving forward, I think it's 110 So it's more expensive than it had been. So you got to make a decision for yourself whether that's actually something that you can justify. And one of the things that uh, is not ideal it's for people like me, where I have a nice, high, high reliable internet connection that I can use most of the time, I don't necessarily need to have access to Starlink on a day-to-day -day basis. Where I could potentially really use it, though, is when I take my production trailer that I'm, that I'm sitting in here now, and I'm using it on-site with a client. There, it happens very often that we try and get a connection through a venue and find out that it's just not reliable or not fast enough no matter what we do. And so we're left to try and find other means to stream. My traditional approach has been to stream through multiple cellular connections. And that does work most of the time. But at the same time, there have been numerous times when I have found that cellular doesn't provide a good enough connection or even a connection at all at a given location. And so the only other option I really have is satellite. So in terms of how I intend to use Starlink, I will be keeping it. I wish I could turn it on and off as needed because... Honestly, I will probably only really need it every other month or so. So it's going to cost me a fair amount of money just to have as a backup. But I think it's probably worth it for those, for those times when I do need additional bandwidth on top of cellular 
or a, a highly unreliable or low bandwidth internet connection at a venue that we happen to be working in. So it's there as a backup. It's certainly not something that I would ever intend to use as a primary internet connection unless they're able to increase that bandwidth significantly and make it more consistent than what it has been to date. In terms of whether it's something that makes sense for you, that's something you really have to decide. You know, I can't make that de decision for you. But hopefully based on the information that I provided here in this video, gets you a little bit closer to being able to decide whether Starlink can actually make sense for you in your particular video production workflow or not. So anyway, and with that, if you have any questions about this, be sure and leave those in the comment section down below, or you can join me over on Discord, djp.li slash Discord. We've got a huge community of people who work in video production and are very eager to help out and answer questions whenever they possibly can. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do video production related content about once a week, and I'm currently in the process of build, building out a video production facility in the basement of my home, and I'm currently documenting that on um, YouTube members and Patreon only series of videos. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider signing up for one of those. The number of videos that you have access to depends on the, the level that you happen to sign up. So obviously the lowest level get the fewest number of videos and the highest level get the most. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider taking a look at that. So that's gonna do it for now. So thanks everybody for watching and have a fantastic day.